Did you know pillagers used to look like this? Or that it's possible for an iron golem to turn evil? And today we're joined by Block Facts to see the 47 mob facts you possibly didn't know. And hey, the YouTube analytics magician told me that no one has ever subscribed to the channel with their left ring finger. And honestly, I don't know why anyone would, but if you're up to that challenge, place your digitus medicinalist on that red sub button down below. It's free and it helps out a ton. Zombie piglins used to look like this. Back when they were first announced, they'd exposed red flesh in their texture and they didn't hold any kind of weapon which made them look a lot more like zombies than we're used to. But that version of the pigmen never made it into the game, and they were changed to a green color before its release. Zombie pigmen weren't the only nether mob that got a makeover though. During development, blazes originally had no eyes, and they just float around without any expression. But according to Jeb, this made it look more like a yellow rock than a mob, so the eyes were added in to give it more personality. Minecraft's ghasts look like ghosts, but they're actually cats. At least according to C418, one of the game's composers. In a Reddit AMA, they confirmed that the sounds for the ghast came from from their pet cat, who made the noises when it'd get disturbed while sleeping. Maybe chickens are really small, but they aren't coded like they are. See, even though these mobs are less than a half a block in size, they still won't walk through half block tall spaces, meaning you don't have to worry about any of these mobs escaping through this slab, even if it doesn't make much sense. You know how a chicken can keep running with its head cut off? Well, the same does happen in Minecraft, kind of. See, if you were to kill a chicken where it falls off a cliff, its corpse will fall slower than any other, and additionally, it'll still flap its wings after dying. When they were first shown off, piglins would raise their arms like this to attack you when angry, making them look a lot more like zombie pigmen than the piglins were used to. However, this seems to have been removed before any nether update snapshots came out. From afar, this might look confusing, but up close, you'll notice that this mess of white lines is actually an iron golem. See, when an iron golem cracks as its health goes down, those cracks show up when it's got the glowing effect, giving you even more of a reminder to toss in an iron ingot to heal it up. This wolf might be angry, but it'll never hurt me. And the reason is that when in peaceful mode, wolves cannot get aggressive. And in fact, the only mob can capable of hurting you in peaceful mode is a llama that spits on you. Nothing else works. If you watch closely, this squid's arms will start to move slower and slower. And why this happens is because, in bedrock only, a squid's arms show how much oxygen it has left. So when 15 seconds pass and it's out of air in the tank, its arms will stop and it'll suffocate. Which seems like a lot of effort to code for such a pointless mob. You can never outrun this slime. And the reason is that a slime's size determines its movement speed. So a size 8 slime will always outpace a player if you're not using any potion effects. The phantom used to to look like a nether mob, but that's the problem. It was never meant to be. So because of this, Mojang switches red texture to the darker purple colors that we see today. This fox is too small for its own good, and that becomes immediately apparent when you put it in water. Sure, it's cute, but it's so small that even when it's swimming, it'll start drowning. And you can notice this when a baby fox tries to hunt a fish. It'll likely die before it gets to the food. Back in the beta, Minecraft's Endermen used to look like this. They had green eyes instead of purple ones, and they emitted a kind of black smoke. Oh, and they also had the same sound effects that the zombie did, which is confusing to hear nowadays. But luckily, they weren't very strong back then, so it wasn't that big of a threat if you heard either one. This is how we see the end, and this is how an enderman sees the end. If you go into spectator mode and choose an enderman like so, it applies a filter to invert all the colors we see, meaning they see the end as an island of blue stone on a sea of white, with them and the ender dragon also having green eyes. Oh, and to them, cobblestone looks like endstone does to us. There is no limit to the amount of bats that can hang from a single block, which sounds unimportant, but when you you execute it like this, it becomes quickly noticeable, and it can make for a pretty serious prank to surprise your friends down in the caves. Though, since it's impossible to tie bats to a lead, I don't know how you'd get all of them together to do this without a spawn egg. Mushrooms are a ripoff, or well, they were back in beta. See, back in the pre-release, if you right-clicked a mushroom with a stack of bowls, there was a bug that they'd all condensed down into only one bowl of mushroom stew. And if this wasn't changed, I'm not sure many of us would try to find these in a mushroom fields biome. Do you remember when Minecraft was going to add a monkey? Or how about an alligator? Well, if you don't, it's probably because you don't live in China. See, with the release of the Chinese version of Minecraft, Mojang held a special mob vote just for that region. And as we know, the panda won in a landslide, and it now exists in the global release. Back in the day, it was possible to breed mushrooms and cows together, but ever since Snapshot 12W7A, this has been changed so that they only breed amongst themselves. Which seems a little unfair, but since you can't shear a mushroom to change it back to a cow, I guess there's still a workaround if you need it. Skeletons didn't always use bows. In fact, when they were first added, these skeletons would hold out their arms and attack the player just like a zombie. What do creepers and leaves have in common? Well, according to Mojang, a lot, apparently. See, Notch said that he pictures creepers as being made of dry, crunchy leaves. And Dinnerbone furthered this by saying that the creepers explode because they rub together like a bunch of sticks and then spontaneously combust. And so I guess that makes MatPat's theory about them correct on this one. You can only ride in a boat with a skeleton horse in bedrock. Which sounds ridiculous, but what's even more stupid is the steps it takes to pull this off. To do this, you need to get a skeleton horse in a boat and then swim underneath it and ride 
right click the boat to get in and pilot it. Because if you don't, you'll just ride the horse and can't move anywhere. Ever wonder why you can only breed horses with a golden carrot or a golden apple? Well, this actually comes from Greek mythology. See, in the myth, there's this horse named Arian, which was a super steed that only ate precious materials. Which would make a lot more sense to do economically if the Minecraft horses weren't so abysmally slow. Did you know that Minecraft pigs can fly? Though, not like this, but rather like this. See, if one player sits on a saddled pig like so, and then the other one grabs hold of a lead, they can launch off with an elytra and keep both the pig and your friend in tow. But if you do this, just make sure to land in some water. Otherwise, that pig isn't going to make a round trip. What's the difference between a hoglin in 2020 and one today? Well, back in the snapshots for the nether update, the hoglins had a glitch in their code in such a way that their legs and ears would flail about when moved or attacked. When you give a mob the no AI tag, it doesn't move or follow the player. And that's true for all of them, except the guardian. Yeah, apparently, since the guardian's eyes coded as the head on the model, it'll still follow the player, even when it's supposed to have no AI. This is what the spider looked like back in Java Edition Classic. It had a brown texture with black beads for eyes, which is quite the difference from how it looks today. Plus, it gave them some natural camouflage for dirt blocks, so that would have made these even creepier to deal with. During development, the evoker used to look pretty different, and we could see that from when Mojang did this Meet the Evoker article. The mob originally had a hat like so, but even though they removed this before release, it's interesting to note that it resembles the one that you see on the Illusioner mob. Though the Illusioner wasn't added officially either, so maybe Mojang just doesn't like hats. Silverfish used to have as much health as the player, with 20 hit points to their name. And thankfully, after the beta 1.9 pre-release, this was fixed so they now only have 8 HP instead. Even though magma cubes are made of, well, magma, they can swim in water just fine. And in fact, they're the only mob that you'll find in the nether that can swim normally. What do this llama and this boat have in common? Well, if a player rides on top, neither of them will sink, even if you're in water that's deeper than two blocks. Which seems small, but the same can't be said for our horses or pigs, so it's definitely noticeable. And that'll make it all the easier to bring your friends along in the caravan for the next time they travel. Drowned in Bedrock Edition looks significantly different to those in Java. But why is that? You'll notice the drowned mob in Bedrock has a 3D outer layer to its model, which gives it a bigger head and arms than it has in Java. Additionally, this causes its armor to render weirdly, especially with any helmets like so. This feature showed up in Minecraft Story Mode two years before it did in the base game. See, this here is Winslow, the calico cat from the Telltale game. And while they seem like a minor character, this was actually the inspiration for when the calico cats got added into Minecraft in Java 1.14. Except then, their pattern are flipped. If you listen closely, this Ravager sound effect might be familiar. And the reason is that if you change the pitch on the Ravager's first and third death sounds, they turn out to be exactly the same as the Pillager's death sound. <laughs> Did you know pigs could drop brown mushrooms? Sure enough, back in the Java Edition survival test, there was a time where these mobs only dropped brown mushrooms on death. But obviously, this was changed to a pork chop when that item got added in. Though it makes me wonder, if you eat a mushroom stew made out of pig shrooms, is that still vegetarian? I don't know. This is the most deadly puffer fish in Minecraft. And the reason for that is because if you change the NBT tag for a puffer fish's puff state data value, you can change its damage and poison time. So if we use this data command like so, we can make one that's either completely harmless or just destroyer of worlds. Minecraft's pillagers used to look like this. They were designed like a pyro, wearing an orange torn vest and an eye patch. But this picture is the only existing evidence, since the mob designers decided that proper armor would look better instead. Why do striders drop strength? Well, the reason's piglins. See, to explain how these pigs get the strength for their crossbows, Mojang developed the strider with this in mind. And I guess logically they get the item made from these bristles on the side, but they must have a lot over after killing them, since they still barter away their string anyway. Have you ever seen a villager wearing a green hood? Well, if you have, you're probably using programmer art. See, the reason this happens is because the texture for the nitwit before 1.14 has the same file name as the village and pillage update's base texture, proving that all the villagers, even those with jobs, are nitwits in their own way. What makes these baby polar bears special from any other mob in the game? Well, if you listen close to its sound effect, you'll notice that it's not just a sped up version of the regular polar bear's cry, which is how it is for any other baby mob, but instead, the polar bear cub has a unique recording of its own. Did you know that there's an axolotl even rarer than the blue? variant. See, back in the development of Snapshot 21W17A, there was the idea to add an axolotl with an open mouth texture like this, but it was never properly implemented, and by the following snapshot it was removed. So if you see an axolotl with an open mouth, you've either got a glitch, or maybe it's just hungry. But even if it was starving, why does the axolotl eat this fish, but not this one? Well, the answer is actually based on real life. According to Mojang's dev diaries, this is because real axolotls will only eat fish that are alive, so that's why they'll only follow you 
you into battle if you have the bucket. They just want their sushi as raw as it comes. Why do piglin brutes have 50 HP compared to the regular piglin's 16? Well, according to the lead artist Jasper, that's because their golden arm guard serves as protection, which is the first ever case of golden armor actually being effective. Shulkers weren't supposed to be purple. In fact, the original idea was that these mobs could camouflage into any nearby block. So a shulker on purple would look purple, but one on endstone would look like, well, endstone. But Jeb decided this was too difficult to code, so it never made it into the game. Why is this villager riding a chicken? Well, if the baby zombie on a chicken jockey happens to be a zombie villager, then when you cure it, it'll become a villager again, but won't leave the chickens back. Meaning if you cure this diamond armor zombie villager chicken jockey, you'll have the true rarest mob in Minecraft. But unfortunately, we can't take that ultra rare chicken jockey to the nether, since neither chicken jockeys nor spider jockeys are able to go through portals. All right, pop quiz. What mob is this? I'll give you a hint. It's not a silver fish. Actually, it's just an endermite. See, when the endermite was added in, it was just a purple version of the silver fish before it eventually got this new smaller model that we see today. Under certain circumstances, an iron golem will attack a villager. Now, clearly the villagers are a peaceful mob, but if they use their fireworks after a raid, that celebration might just damage a nearby golem. And if it does, does, the Iron Golem will get aggressive and even kill the villager that it's supposed to protect. And with that, folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video, so see if they're right and have a good one, alright?